You'll get, you'll get. Give him the mic. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. Mr. Speaker, on the outset, I oppose this bill. And even having listened to the chair, chairman on the raft of proposed amendments, to that I say too little, too late. Mr. Speaker, first of all, I think I have myself recorded 120 reasons for rejection of this bill. And Mr. Speaker, it is sufficient that the professional associations have spoken to this, the church has spoken to this, civil society has spoken to this, and Kenyans have spoken to this. There are legal reasons for rejecting this bill. There are financial and economic reasons, Mr. Speaker. There are humanitarian reasons. But more fundamentally, it is a moral question. This regime has lost the capacity for shame and does not even regard Kenyans. Mr. Speaker, I was tempted to attack some of these entities, the church, some ambassadors, because they are the ones who are the forefront for supporting this regime. But I will forgive them. I will only tell them it is good you have realized the error of your ways. This regime, Mr. Speaker, needs to understand the etymology of governance. The whole idea of governance is that the people voluntarily relinquish some of their rights and liberties for the government to protect them. But in this case, we have a government that does not want to protect its citizens. It actually wants to decimate them. We must reject that idea. Mr. Speaker, it is important to understand that a budget is made for the people. And traditionally, it is the people who must be listened to. We have a draft bill whose origins is essentially the Bretton Woods Institution, the IMF, and secondarily, the World Bank. Mr. Speaker, the Bretton Woods institutions were never made to further the interests of developing countries. The Bretton Woods institutions were established in 1944 essentially to protect and the war-ravaged countries, which essentially were all the developed countries. Therefore, when they come and they give us prescriptions, those are prescriptions that must be taken with a pinch of salt. In the 1980s and the 1990s, they gave us what was called the Structural Adjusted Adjustment Programs. It is only when Kenya, like other countries, rejected those subs that we started going anywhere, somewhere. Now we are in a situation where the Bretton Woods institutions have come back in full swing in the face of the executive. It must be rejected. Mr. Speaker, it is important to understand that this bill does not protect and is not the interest of Kenyans. And some people are fear-mongering, saying that if you reject the bill, then we'll be in a crisis. We will not be in any crisis. Like last year, Mr. Speaker, when the High Court stayed the 2023 bill, the 2022 bill continued until finally, you know, the bill was cleared. And therefore, Mr. Speaker, the 2023 bill, which is already draconian enough, but is less draconian than this one, let us reject this bill, the 2023 bill will continue, and let us have a bipartisan approach to budget making, so that we can sit down and agree on the basic minimum that must be included in that budget. Mr. Speaker, I reject and I oppose. Thank you very much. Paul Melly. Julius, sorry, not Paul. Julius Melly, Chair of Education.